This is an update video, which is basically code for I'm too f***ing lazy to make real videos. Before we get into the processed beef of this Subway footlong, I've got something a wee bit sweeter. Something you could say can't legally be classified as bread. I'm excited to announce that starting from this Saturday the 24th at 3pm Pacific time, I'm going to be doing weekly live streams right here on the channel. It's going to be a time to talk about photography and stuff that's going on in the photographical space, as well as generally hanging out and even having some cool guests on from time to time. So if that seems like your type of thing, then be sure to tune in this Saturday the 24th at 3pm Pacific Time, right here on the channel. Wow, an update video. I'm really embracing this whole YouTuber thing, huh? Hey, don't forget to like and... subscribe. So, what's new? Well, apart from this apartment, not a whole lot. We're just coming out of winter now, so the past five months have been pretty miserable weather-wise, and I haven't really been motivated to make any new videos. Thankfully, due to my unwavering work ethic, I've got videos from six months ago that I'm still working on. Alongside new videos, I've also been spending all of my rent money on new cameras and new photo books. One thing that's not new, however, is my bad attitude. Let's take a look around the apartment. So this is the lounge slash kitchen slash office. It's where the magic happens. This is my editing setup. I have my main custom built PC. I put a 3070 in it so that I could ensure my Minesweeper games run smoothly. Um, I've got a fair bit of streaming equipment here because I used to stream. Got a Yamaha mixer and also over the back here I've got a 2009 Mac Mini so that I can record off of mini DV tapes because it was the easiest way I could find to get a firewire connection. I also use this shelf to file my negatives. Don't pay any attention to the literal mountain of unfiled negatives. I'm getting around to it. Moving over, we've got a bookshelf that is shelving some books and some cameras. But more importantly, it is also shelving some of my VHS collection. This one here is probably one of my favorites from my collection. It is Kiki's Delivery Service in Japanese, and it doesn't have any subtitles, but you get the vibe of the movie, so it's all good. Moving on, this is the bedroom. It's where the magic happens. I've got a small setup. To watch my VHS tapes. I've also got a bigger TV but that's currently in storage. I've got a poster for The Thing, probably peak horror in my opinion. Also got some knickknacks, pretty cool alarm clock with a cassette player in it. Uh, and finally moving on, this is the bathroom. It's where the magic happens. Yeah, it's a bathroom. <laughs> So recently, with shipping and due to the fact that I live on a literal island, I haven't been buying many international photo books and zines, but I have managed to pick up a few really nice photo books from some very talented local folk, as well as find some cool books in secondhand stores. I bought most of these at the end of 2021, but if I haven't talked about them on the internet, do I really own them? Starting with a secondhand find, we have Metropolisan by Jeanne Ping, which is a collection of visual puns and plays on words that take place in the French metro. I really like that even though I don't speak a lick of French, the concept that these images are all visual puns is strong enough that I can understand many of the jokes without speaking the language. It's a great concept and the book itself is really nicely made. I really do like these contact sheet pages, they're definitely a nice touch. Next, with a few local pickups, we've got Curtis Coffee Table Book by Curtis Bunker, which is a study of small town New Zealand and its time capsule-esque atmosphere. This book is particularly nostalgic for me, because as a kid I spent quite a lot of time in small towns similar to those highlighted in Curtis's book, and I find myself drawn to a lot of the same style of photography. And lastly, we have The Spaces We Inhabit by Jolie Lefeuve, which is a really beautiful collection of portraits showcasing not only the people, but the environments that they exist and feel comfortable in. 
I think it's a real talent to take good portraits, hence why you never see me taking any, but to make them look so effortless and natural requires a whole nother level of talent. I actually spoke to Jolie about her book a while back, and the whole conversation will be out as its own video tomorrow. So starting it off, recently I picked up a new point and shoot, the Fuji DL300. It is really quite a simple point and shoot, there's no fancy functions or anything, it's got a flash, it's decently sized, but the thing that I really love about it is the fact that it's got a fixed 35mm f2.8 lens, which is plenty bright and plenty sharp. If you used a point and shoot before, one with a zoom lens, you might notice that the images, they're not always as sharp as you want, it doesn't always hit focus, and I'm not saying that this thing always hits focus, but when it does, oh boy, is it crisp. Fits in my pocket, takes a good photo, that's all I need. And now heading to the other end of the spectrum, I've got my medium format camera, the Pentax 645N. So this is a autofocus SLR style medium format camera from 1997. It shoots 645 negatives, which means you get 16 shots on a roll of 120. The only downside to this camera that I've found so far is I don't have any autofocus lenses. So focusing sometimes can be a wee bit of a pain with these old manual focus lenses, but boy are they sharp. I also absolutely love the meter on this camera. 99% of the time it gives a super accurate reading and I don't even need to bring my external Siconic light meter with me. And also, as far as medium format cameras go, it's not the most unwieldy camera. If you've tried shooting with a Pentax 67 or a Mamiya RB or RZ67, you'll know that they can be real heavy and a real pain to shoot and compose with sometimes. It's large, but it's not the largest one out there, so that's always nice. And finally, for something a wee bit different, we've got the Fuji X100F. This is a fixed lens, rangefinder style, digital camera. And although it's not the latest iteration in the X100 series, it still is a really good camera. Now, it doesn't have the newer sensor or processor that the X100V has, but what it does have is the same 35mm equivalent F2 lens and raw sex appeal. The camera itself handles really well. You've got a fixed lens, an optical or an electronic viewfinder, and the out-of-camera JPEGs are probably some of the best I've seen. Everybody knows Fuji, Fuji JPEGs are mwah because of their X-Trans color array sensor, whatever, just mint. The actual shooting experience combined with the images you get just makes it a really great time shooting this camera. And so those are the recent camera pickups. Let's go and talk about some videos. So believe it or not, probably believe it rather than not because it's true, I've got two videos really close to finish in the editing pipeline right now. The first of which was a road trip I took at the start of autumn. I shot through a couple of rolls, I shot some Ektar, I shot some Portra 800, and we spent the whole day taking these rural roads all the way up to Naseby. It was a really nice trip, and I took some photos that I'm really happy with. And the other video is about a particular film stock that has a particular sensitivity to a particular wavelength of light. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm really looking forward to this video. The photos I got from that role, that's, that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. I've also got a couple of videos that I'm in the process of writing and recording various stages of conceptualization. I've got a few on some cameras, I've also got some on some different types of films and some different ways of shooting certain films. And also tomorrow we've got the interview with Jolie, of course, 
talking about her book, The Spaces We Inhabit. So be sure to check out the full interview. Hey, thanks for watching.